Welcome to the first installment of the 2021 Legends of Simpson Faculty Lecture Series, a five-part virtual event featuring some of Simpson College's most beloved emeriti faculty, presenting on topics that are near and dear to their hearts. Today, you'll hear from Simpson legend Dr. Joe Moody, a biology professor from 1976 to 2002, as he presents the Medal of Honor and other Medals of Valor. Let's, let's start out. I've got three questions that I'm going to ask you first, and uh, keep them in mind. First, do you, any of you know the names of any Medal of Honor winners? The second, do any of you know the procedure that you follow to be awarded the Medal of Honor or any of the Medals of Valor? And third, the significance of March the 25th. First off, the names of the Medal of Honor winners. If you know the name of one of those or several, probably one that you do know is Audie Murphy. And why do you know Audie Murphy is a Medal of Honor winner? Probably not because of the medal that he was awarded, but it was probably because he was made into a movie star. So it was the stardom, it was the publicity that he received that then allowed you to think that, okay, he was a Medal of Honor winner. You know celebrities, you know athletes, you know movie stars, but it's because you are shown those, you are taught about those, and those are the reasons that you know those people. Uh, so it's a, it's a teaching thing. Uh, I was a teacher. All of you, maybe some of you are teachers, but you all went to school, and that's how you learn things. And so uh, Medal of Honor, though, is not taught in schools. Medals of Valor are not taught. Um, maybe at military schools they are, but at regular schools they're not. So there's really no way that your children or probably you all never were introduced to them. You've heard about them, uh, but that's about it. Of course, my belief is that every American uh, at least needs to be introduced to the procedure that people need to go through them to get the Medal of Honor. Now, most Medal of Honor winners don't want their name out there. It brings back memories that sometimes they don't want to know about. They're very humble people, but the procedure that they go through, I think every American should know. So today, with my little introduction I'm going to give you, hopefully, I don't know the name of this, I'll call it use your Googler or whatever it is that you uh, look up things, and maybe it will it, fire you to look a little deeper into the Medal of Honor. Well, let's talk about the Medal of Honors now. What are they? Well, of course, the first one is the highest echelon is the Medal of Honor. But immediately below the Medal of Honor, we find they're called the service crosses. Below the service crosses, are, sir, you hear the silver star. Below the silver star is the uh, bronze star with a V device. Now the V stands for valor, it doesn't stand for victory, but those are the four echelons of the uh, medals of valor. If I have time, I wanna talk about the Purple Heart a little bit, which all of you obviously have heard about, but I consider it kind of in that same category as the Medal of Honor. Why am I interested in this? Why, how, did, how did I get introduced into this? You all know me or those of you that do or those of you that don't. I taught science. I never told anybody about other parts of my background, but I'm gonna tell you that uh, before I do that, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna put you in a situation. You've all, uh, you've all seen movies. And you all know what a machine gun is. And you all know what a rifle is. I want you to put your mind in a situation where you are in a, a position and half a football length or less away from you, there's an individual or several people that are shooting at you and they are shooting a machine gun and our rifles. And that is the situation I'm going to read a citation for 
a Korean veteran named Junior Edwards. And Junior Edwards was in that particular situation when he was then made eligible for the Medal of Honor. I'm gonna read this to you. Think about it at the time. Sergeant Edwards, Company E, distinguished himself by conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty and action against the enemy. When his position, while assisting in the defense of a strategic hill, was forced out of its position and came under vigorous ranking fire from an enemy machine gun set up on an adjacent hill, Sergeant Edwards individually charged the hostile emplacement throwing grenades as he advanced. The enemy withdrew, but returned to deliver devastating fire when he had expended all of his ammunition. Securing a fresh supply of grenades, he again, the second time, charged the emplacement, neutralized the weapon, and killed its crew, but was forced back by the surrounding small arms fire. When the enemy emplacement and placed another machine gun and resume fire, Sergeant Edwards, the third time, renewed his supply of grenades, rushed, and the, uh, was this time he was killed. Uh, but he silenced the second gun and killed its crew. Now, think about that. What is it that inspires a person to protect, to do what he did, and it, it, I can't, imagine, I can't imagine it, but military people are ingrained with the motto of duty, honor, and country. He was doing his duty, he was doing it honorably for his country and for his comrades. I don't know, I don't know whether I, thank goodness when I was in the service, I was never put in that situation, but I have no idea what it would take to do that. Uh, then why am I interested in this? Well, most of you don't know, but uh, when I was 15, I ended up in a military school. I'm not going to tell you whether I went there voluntarily or whether I was sent there. That's for you to figure out. But I spent my high school years, and it was a junior college also, five years in military school. And there we had classes on old military science and tactics. And uh, we had a Medal of Honor recipient speak to one of our classes. And the citation that he read was not identical to this obvious, but it was the same level of valor. And it hit my little 15 year old pea brain and I, I have never forgotten it. Then most of you also don't know, I served during the Vietnam War as a field artillery battery commander and I know of two soldiers, I didn't know them personally, but they were in a unit next to ours, who were both recommended for the Medal of Honor. And uh, uh, I know what they did. And I thought, there's no way these people will not get it, or they will obviously not using the double negative. They will surely get the Medal of Honor. Neither one did. They both got silver stars, which is the third echelon down from the Medal of Honor. Also, I've been a member of the American Legion ever since I got out of the service. And uh, when I ended, we got to Indianola, I looked on the wall and there was a plaque. And the plaque was about a Medal of Honor recipient. His name was Junior Edwards. And I started talking to the people in the group about it, uh, the Legion, and nobody seemed, they knew it was, they knew he was, that Medal of Honor winner, but I kept started asking questions about the process of getting it, and not many people knew. I went out in the community, nobody knew, and uh, you probably don't know about Junior Edwards. That is the citation I just read. He is an Indianola resident. He went to Indianola High School. He was the only Korean War veteran to receive the Medal of Honor. Yet he's an Indianola veteran and nobody knows anything about him in Indianola. So I went to the high school, went to the superintendent, and went to the principals. And now in 
the high school in Indianola, the high school seniors are getting a class on the procedure that it takes to achieve or win the Medal of Honor or the other Medals of Valor. Hopefully that'll permeate out in the community and now people will learn about Junior Edwards. In addition, most of you know that we're building a new uh, courthouse uh, in, in Indianola and the, we have been offered an opportunity and we're gonna take it obviously to have a memorial to Junior Edwards in its atrium. So enough of that. What about the Medal of Honor? When did it start? Kind of interesting. There's also another Iowa connection here because in 1861, at the start of the Civil War, um, President Lincoln wanted what he called an incentive medal. He wanted something to say, we, we, the Army had no medals for valor or for doing anything. And he said, let's get us a medal that will allow our troops to maybe our union troops to fight better uh, so he i don't know how he got together with senator grimes of iowa and they came up with the medal of honor and in 1862 the congress authorized it and it became the medal of honor in uh, 1862 july uh, 20 uh, july of 1862 also, you might not know it, but Senator Grimes was also the third governor of the state of Iowa. But unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, the, the first Medal of Honor, it was, it was very easy to obtain. It, the criteria for it were almost non-existent. As an example, a Union soldier just had to be able to secure a Confederate flag and bring it back over to the Union side and they got the Medal of Honor. Uh, 20 plus uh, of the uh, people who were on President Lincoln's funeral service uh, got the Medal of Honor. Uh, Buffalo Bill Cody got the Medal of Honor because he supplied buffalo uh, meat to the people who were building the railroads during the, the Civil War. So the criteria were, were very vague back then. And they remained that way up until really 1963. Each branch of the service had their own criteria for awarding the Medal of Honor. And the review processes were different for each of the services. And it remained vague. As a matter of fact, there were some uh, where there were non-Valor Medal of Honor that were awarded. Uh, the Army and the Navy both had that category. So in 1963, the Department of Defense said, we've had enough. We need to standardize all of this. So they then came up with what is called the military definition of valor. And I wanna read it to you. Now, as I read it to you, I want you to listen to the wording carefully because some of the words in there are again, kind of like I said, when you set up that situation for the uh, citation that I read about Junior Edwards, uh, where he was standing on a hill and people shooting at him with a machine gun and he was dead what he did. These wording, the wording in here, kind of same thing. Definition of valor for the Medal of Honor. Exceptional or heroic courage when facing extreme danger, especially in battle, with significant and obvious risk to personal injury or death. That's pretty significant. The criteria or standards by which any soldier is considered for any of the medals of valor are compared to that definition. In addition, we've had 23 uh, situations where the Medal of Honor is, can be awarded. And in 1963, they came up with the three criteria. One of them, first, is while engaged in an action against an enemy of the United States. This is when we have declared war. World War II was the last of these, uh, where we declared war against Japan, Germany, and Italy, World War II. 
but some of you I noticed when I could see your pictures up there uh, were obviously alive close to World War II. Some of you even in World War II maybe during, the, during those days. Uh, but you also were alive in the 60s and 70s. And that was in the Cold War era. So there were no wars declared in the Cold War, but there were combat troops, soldiers that were doing things that were, were worthy of consideration for the medals. And so here's that criteria. While engaged in military operations involving conflict with an opposing foreign force, i.e. the Cold War, Cuban crisis is one of those, that those of you that were alive back then and know about it, remember the Cuban crisis. The third criteria are the ones that have been most recent. While serving with a friendly foreign force engaged in an armed conflict against an opposing armed force in which the United States is not a belligerent party. This one, we talk about Korea and we talk about Vietnam. Those were never declared wars, but what we were doing were we were assisting the South Koreans in their fight against the North Koreans, and we were assisting the South Vietnamese in their fight against the North Koreans and the, uh, the uh, North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. So in 63, everything became standardized and these eliminated the loopholes for earning or for being considered for the Medal of Honor in non-combat or non-veteran, uh, non-valor situations. <clears throat> right now, I wanna show you then the pictures of the medals that we're talking about. Now, I can't tell you how this is going to work, but, uh, but I'm going to try. And if this doesn't work, Andy, you have to come on and tell me, wait a minute, this isn't working because I can't see anything, so I can't tell. But let's look at them first. I'm going to have to peek around. I've never done this before. It's obvious. These are the three medals of honor. Uh, first off, you see at the very top, it is the Medal of Honor ribbon. All of you have seen soldiers with their uniforms with ribbons. Uh, this is, if you see the, the blue ribbon with the five white, st uh, white stars, that is what is worn on the uniform. The Medal of Honor, the three below that, are the only medals that are worn, allowed to be worn around the neck. Uh, if you look at the one, uh, I can't see, Army, okay, the Army Medal of Honor here, you notice all three medals at the top have 13 stars, those represent the 13 colonies. Then you see in the army, there is the bald eagle. Then there's this note that says valor. Then there is a five pointed star that has Moderna in the middle. She is the Roman goddess of wisdom and war. Now, when you consider wisdom and war, sometimes that's hard to put those two together, but I guess if you're gonna fight a war, you gotta have the wisdom to you get through it or whatever. But surrounding it is a laurel wreath, which means victory. And then in the, each of the five points, there are oak leaves, which represent strength. If we look at the Navy, we have the Navy, the Marines, and the Coast Guard Medal of Honor. It has an anchor. It has the five-pointed star. The laurel wreath is in the center. It has the oak leaves and it also has Minerva, Minerva, which is in the center. And then if we look at the Air Force Medal, it looks very similar to the Army Medal, except it has an eagle with a bunch of uh, uh, lightning bolts going out, which represents the Air Force. And it has, instead of in the center, instead of having the uh, Minerva, it has, uh, uh, the, stat the bust of the Statue of Liberty, which of course means liberty. We look down next at the next echelon and we see the second, if they don't get the Medal of Honor, then they are moved into what are called the service crosses. And the service crosses, there is the Army Service Cross, there is, I can't see what I'm looking at, it's probably the Air, no, that's the Navy, I, excuse me. That's the Navy and the Marine Service Cross. 
peeking around the side here. And then this is the Air Force Service Cross. And you notice up here in the Medal of Honor, I say Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. Down here, it's just Navy, Marines. And the Coast Guard in 2017 just developed their own service cross. And uh, it's never been issued, but this is their service cross, service crosses. And the next echelon is the, the Silver Star, uh, which is the third echelon down. These are what the, the two soldiers that I knew in Vietnam ended up with. The Silver Star started actually in 1918, right at the end of the Civil War. And it was that time, it was a little quarter inch silver star that fit on the lapel of the uniform. And it was called the Citation Star. And uh, uh, they decided in 1932 that they wanted to put it in a larger medal. So here is the silver star, which people look at it and say, well, that's a gold star. It is. Uh, it's not gold. It's some, some kind of an uh, amalgam that looks gold. But in the center is the silver star, which has been replaced from the citation star. This is the silver star, which is the third echelon. And it is for all services. It's not divided between any of the various branches. All the branches get the silver star as the, as the third echelon. The fourth echelon and the final echelon is the bronze star with a V device. And the bronze star with a V device is this. It's a bronze star and the V, have I got my finger on the right side? I think so. The V does not stand, a lot of people say it stands for victory, it of course stands for valor. But that's the bronze star. Now the bronze star is a little different because it can be issued, excuse me, all the stars all the medals up until the Bronze Star, the medal is awarded to an individual. The Bronze Star with a V device is awarded to an individual. But you'll see on license plates sometime the Bronze Star. The Bronze Star without the V device is also called the unit citation. And it can be issued to a unit that does something that is extraordinary. Okay. Let's look at the process then of awarding the SAR, the, the, uh, the medals. It is the most critiqued or reviewed award presented by the United States government. There are 13 steps that it has to go through or reviews that it has to go through before it is finally approved or reduced to one of the lesser medals of valor. It takes at least 18 months after the review starts for it to be approved. Usually they take much longer than that. If it's submitted within two years of the time of the act, it can be reviewed immediately. If it's submitted between two and five years, it has to be submitted by a member of Congress. And that member of Congress then goes through two committees before they can approve it to start its review. If it is submitted uh, over five years after the act, there has to be an act of Congress. They have to, uh, Congress has to vote on it as a whole as to whether it can be reviewed or it can be an order by the President of the United States. The recommendation has to come from the immediate commander of the unit that has the troop, the, the, the soldier in it. Now I'm going to play like this as an army person because I don't know the army terms. I don't know the Navy or the Marine terms, or I don't know the Air Force terms. But just to give you an idea, if it happens at the squad level, it goes from the squad, it's reviewed. It goes to the commander of the platoon, it's reviewed. To the company, to the battalion, to the brigade, to the division, to the corps. The corps is 50,000 plus people. They have committees to review them. At any of those levels, it can be eliminated, canceled. It can be reduced to one of the lesser medals of valor. Then it hits the Pentagon. At the Pentagon, it goes to the Director of Officer Enlistment Personnel Management, to the Department of Human Resources, to the uh, Manpower and Reserve Affairs, 
the chief of staff of the army and his committees, secretary of defense and committees, and to Congress. Congress votes on it, and then to the president for presentation. No other, no other medal that we present has to go through that many reviews before it is awarded. Now, how many of you have heard Congressional Medal of Honor? That is wrong. It is used often. It is common usage. I'd rather see people use it than, 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 than not use it. Uh, but the reason it got a, a Congress got Congressional got attached to it was because the Congress is the final uh, say so, or the final vote as to whether or not it's issued or not. So it got called the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's not the name. It is just Medal of Honor. Okay. Talk about some numbers here because we're getting pretty close. Numbers. There have been 3,500 and they've been 3,507 Medals of Honor awarded to date. That does not include the rescinded medals, which there are a lot have been rescinded. All of Abraham Lincoln's funeral staff, they've been rescinded. They didn't, they didn't, they don't have the medal anymore. There have been 19 double recipients. There have been no triple recipients of the Medal of Honor. Now, in the Civil War, okay, there's 3,507. In the Civil War, there were 1,522 medals issued, which is about 45% of all the medals because there were the criteria were so loose. In World War II, things began to begin to get a little more critiqued and the standards became more critical. And in World War II, there were 464 medals. Uh, in Vietnam, there were 246. After Vietnam, there have been 28. One is still being reviewed. Captain Albright in 1969 in Vietnam he received the Silver Star. Another Iowa connection, Senator, Senator Joni Ernst is now trying with the committees to get his medal brought up to the, uh, uh, to the Medal of Honor. It hasn't happened yet. One of the misnomers that a lot of people I've talked to in Indianola when I made that survey, they said you have to be posthumously, it has to be awarded after you've been, have, you had to be killed during, the, during the, the act that you did. That's not true at all. In the Civil War, 13% were posthumous. After World War II, when the criteria became standardized or started to become standardized, almost 50% have been awarded posthumously. There are 23 conflicts that are eligible in that category one, two, and three I gave you, 23 conflicts or wars that we've had that a soldier that is in, the, in those conflicts is eligible for the Medal of Honor. Uh, Got some other stuff here, but I, I, I don't, it's been 30 minutes, I think. I'd like to talk just about two minutes. Uh, 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 Andy, give me two minutes on the, uh, the Purple Heart. I think that's interesting. The Purple Heart uh, was the first badge of military merit. It was issued in 1782 by General George Washington during the Revolutionary War. It was a little, <laughs> Well, I got a picture of it here. It was a little thing that fit around the sleeve. Uh, just, uh, uh, I don't know, I was, that's it. Anyway, first one. And it's, it's interesting because it uh, wasn't used very much until February 1932, uh, the 200th birthday of George Washington, uh, 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 General Douglas MacArthur took it to Congress and it was approved as the Purple Heart. It has the profile of George Washington in the center of it. And you all recognize the Purple Heart Medal of today. Okay, let me read you what you have to do and think about the difference. It's awarded to members of the United States Armed Forces who have been wounded or killed in action against an enemy. Considered the oldest American military decoration for military merit. The difference is you have to be engaged in a combat situation. If you're in training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and somehow an artillery round's a short round and you get wounded or you get killed, you're not eligible for the Medal of Honor. 
if you were in Vietnam and uh, you happen to get hurt or injured in a combat situation, you are eligible for the, uh, I'm sorry, for the Purple Heart, not Medal of Honor, for the Purple Heart. So that's a little different. Got closing here. March 25th, I told you to remember that day and probably you don't know anything about it. In 1990, President Bush introduced the National Medal of Honor Day. So on March the 25th, every one of you, fly your American flag. Uh, there's a Medal of Valor that has been introduced for civilians now, it has nothing to do, I just think you need to know about it, for police, firemen, first responders, that do things that warrant, and it's called the Medal of Valor. Uh, lastly, there's a movie I want you all to watch, but I want to put some codicils on it. If you have young children, don't let them see it. If you have middle-aged children, you might not want them to see it. The language in it is combat language. It's very vague, it's a, it's a vivid movie, but it's uh, it show it's the Afghanistan war, the most decorated uh, unit in the Afghanistan war. If you watch it, you see at the end, it shows you the participants of that battle and which of the medals of honor they won, whether it was the Medal of Honor, whether it was the uh, Silver Star, whether it was the military crosses, or whether it was the uh, uh, a bronze star with a V device, it shows them all. And it's the name of it is the outpost, the outpost. Uh, if you, while you're doing your Googling and you find an evening when you're, don't mind watching some vivid scenes and hearing some bad language, uh, it will show you then this information that I've been talking about. Andy, I think probably I've, I'm, I, I've got a lot of other stuff, but I'll shut up. Well, that is perfect timing, and thank you so much, Dr. Moody. Uh, that's, that was great. Uh, we will open it up to questions, and you can submit those questions directly to me via chat, or if you'd like, you can turn your video on and unmute and ask the question directly if you wish. Are there any questions out there? That's usually what I give. That's my response. Uh huh. <laughs> well, if there are no questions, I can keep talking. And then if you have a question, interrupt me. Is that does that work on this kind of video thing? Why don't we do that? Uh, if you have more than the, work. and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up no later than twelve forty-five. So we have ten minutes, and we do have okay. one chat that what just came. Myth that somebody I saw the question. Uh, what? What more do you know about, you know, just see J-U-N. I don't know okay. what that means. I have, um, so what is the- Edwards, I bet. Yep. What do you know about Junior Edwards? Yes. Okay. Uh, Junior Ed, I don't know who's asking the question, but of course I don't know Junior Edwards. He was a Korean War veteran, and obviously he was killed during the war, but I do know that, uh, he did attend Indianola High School, and uh, he was a, a resident of Indianola, but that's about all I know about uh, Edwards, I'm sorry. All right, we have another question that came in. Why is the Purple Heart purple? Huh, that's what George Washington designed it, I guess. I didn't ask him. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know. And then what is the medal that Bill Belichick just refused and that Dan Gable accepted? Oh, that's the Medal of Freedom. That has nothing to do with any of the Medals of Valor. That was the Medal of Freedom that he, he, he rejected. I'm sorry, that wasn't in this time. I don't, uh, okay, I don't know that I answered your question, but that's the one. I think it was the Medal of Freedom, as a matter of fact. Yes, it was. All right, are there any other questions out there? Well, I either explained it well or I didn't even get your attention. So, uh, uh, okay, I've got a couple of other things I can do. There's been one female Medal of Honor recipient and she was uh, uh, Dr. Walker and it was during the Civil War and uh, uh, she received the Medal of Honor. It was temporarily revoked because she was a civilian 
but in 1970, oh, I don't remember, the, in the 70s sometime, or late 60s, uh, they reinstated her Medal of Honor, uh, but she received it. The youngest Medal of Honor recipient's kind of neat. It was a drummer boy, 13 years old, during the Vietnam, uh, during the Civil War, and, uh, but uh, uh, he was, his was, was re re revoked. Uh, and the actual one that saved it was a man, Jack Lucas, who was 17 years old, and he jumped on two grenades, and was posthumously, obviously, but his medal was, that was the youngest. There have been 911 medals of honor that had been revoked. Uh, 864 of those were in the Civil War because one whole, the 27th Marine, uh, no, Main Regiment, re-enlisted and so the, for re-enlisting they all got the medal of honor those were all revoked uh, kind of interesting that uh, it is wearing the medal of honor is against the law i don't know what to uh you can tell people you can falsely say i can tell you i got the medal of honor but i better not show it i can i can lie about it but i can't show it go figure i don't know there have been uh uh, uh, one, one president has awarded the Medal of Honor, and that was Roosevelt during the Spanish-American War. There have been uh, two father and son recipients, Arthur MacArthur and Douglas MacArthur. Arthur MacArthur, why would you name your kid Arthur MacArthur? But uh, and during the Civil War, he was awarded the Medal of Honor, and Douglas MacArthur during World War II. Theodore Roosevelt and... Uh, Theodore Roosevelt Jr. Theodore Roosevelt, of course, was Spanish-American War, and his son, uh, Theodore Roosevelt Jr., who was uh, in World War II. Uh, there have been, there are four Medals of Honor awarded to unknown soldiers. In the World War II Korea and Vietnam, those soldiers were chosen to receive the Medal of Honor, and they have been given that Medal of Honor uh, just because they have been. Um, oh, okay, I'm just jabbering on here. Do you, what is the process to revoke a Medal of Honor? Is it pretty stringent it's, as well? It's very stringent. As a matter of fact, it goes through the review through the Pentagon is where it goes. It doesn't go back to the units. It doesn't go back that far, but it has to be uh, revoked through uh, the, uh, really the Army Chief of Staff and the Department of the Secretary of Defense uh, work on that the most. Good question. Yes, sir. From Peggy Wild, I don't know what, I don't know. That was just a follow up from the uh, Medal of Freedom question. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought that was the one. I'm not sure. There's been some other, there's kind of an interesting thing that you might want to know about that has to do with the, uh, remember I said the V device on the, uh, the uh, uh, Bronze Star, they've introduced two more devices now, and one that is really kind of interesting is called the R device that is put on metals. This has, this is, this is very current because it has to do with drones and non-interaction directly with an enemy. And I'll read it to you. Recognizes hands-on employment of a weapon system or other war fighting activities in direct and immediate impact on an operation. The device appears intended for drone operators, cyber warfare specialists, and others who contribute to the battlefield initiatives while not directly exposed to hostile action or significant risk. So we've got people, now think about this, you're in a complex and you are really in charge of a system that can, in, it, that can impact and produce casualties on civilians and on military alike. So you have to make that you have to make that judgment as a person. And they've said, a person to make that judgment needs some kind of recognition. You're not there. 
you're thousands of miles away. You're looking at it like you're looking at me on a TV screen. Is that to shut me up? I saw you turn your head there. Okay. I have a visitor here, but um, you, you do have another hair, question. Hair but anyway, that's called an R device. And I don't know much about it. It's just recent. Excuse me. I saw somebody said something. and I'm Yes, it, it says, do you know if any other residents of Indianola besides Junior Edwards have received any of the Medals of Valor? Oh, boy. I know none have received the Medal of Honor. I do know there have some that received the Bronze Star, yes. I do not know of anybody who has received the, oh, how many of you, about, um, okay, I do not know of anybody who's received the Service Cross or a Silver Star. Yes, I do know some that have received Bronze Stars there in the American Legion and the VFW. One you might be familiar with who was a, who was a, a graduate of Simpson, a very big supporter of Simpson, was on Simpson's board, was Jim Weinman. Jim Weinman was uh, uh, a Bronze Star recipient. He was not a Bronze Star with a V device. He was a Bronze Star unit citation, however, but he was a Bronze Star recipient. And there are some other Bronze Star recipients, but yes, I don't, uh, yes. I don't know whether I've answered your question or not. We're coming up on 1245 now, so I would like to take this opportunity and on behalf of, of everyone that's joined us today to say thank you, Dr. Moody, uh, for taking the time to, to visit with all of us, and it's been a, a great pleasure. I want to say one thing before I quit. You all, you probably wanted me to talk about modified messenger RNA vaccines. The reason I didn't talk about that is anywhere on social media, you can read a flipping lot more about the modified, you know, vaccine than I could probably ever explain to you. So Merry Christmas. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Moody. And everyone have a wonderful day. Yep. Thank you.